I have pushed the recordy button. Getting tabled. 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 With the Bruce and the Yang. Hello, future people, and you're again listening to Getting Tabled with your host, the Bruce. Hey, it's the Bruce, and down there, we have the George. Or the Yank. Oh, I'm, I'm, uh, I, see, I see you to, 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 to this direction of me. You're right there. That's not my problem. <laughs> oh. Um, uh. It, it, we are on recording on a Halloween Eve. Uh, yes. Oh yes, because I'm in front of you. Of well, course, I was getting confused for a second. Yes, you're in the you're in the future, Bruce. We've gone through this many times. <laughs> um, unfortunately, Captain Sox can't join us today because he's no something family wise came up. So he was going to join us. Oh uh, yeah, it's it's, and it's Halloween and trick or treating, so he's got. He's got a little crew of kids that he has to go knock on people's doors to get candy. How is candy more important than gaming? Well, so, so are you familiar with Babylon B? They're kind of like the onion, right? Yeah. They, they posted a little, little headlight. It's like, parents, be sure to go through and check your kids' candy so you can get all the Reese's that need them. <laughs> um, this is this is not a mock headline. This is just... A, that's a public service announcement. Obviously... You should do that because Reese's. Look, with all of the torture that kids put you through, it's only fair that you get to steal the good candy. Right? No, exactly. I Even thought, with the, the little, Halloween, you know. Trick or treating was not happening in most states. Uh, yes and no. Okay. Parts of the country, like, for example, where I live, where there's no people. Well, that is, yeah, we good, good luck trying to do it then. We, we naturally distance, so yes, the the town I live in, we we've had a huge uptick because of the university, but a lot of other places, not not necessarily like metro areas where there's a high population density, but the the more rural of areas, it's people are still doing stuff. Hmm. So, um, yes, so and 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 I've seen some stuff in Captain Sox uh, being in the military; they are doing stuff on bases, so. No, oh, that's true. Yeah, I hadn't thought of that. Too. Um, yeah. Shall we so his two weeks is up. This feed or note worthy information, especially about recent or important events. All right. So I just noticed how cool a uh, Warcrail Studios logo actually is. Yeah, it is actually kind of cool. It took me a while to actually realize where. Right. It was. Yeah. No, that's. But, but yeah, yes, War really Studios has a sci-fi arena fighting game based on Altered Carbon. Yes. So for those that are not familiar, Altered Carbon have a TV show on Netflix. Um, I need to finish watching it because it actually has one of my favorite actors in it. Um, I've only gotten like two episodes in. So I don't. I'm not familiar enough with the show to recognize any of these characters. Or know whether things are going to be different or not. I know it's extremely sci-fi. Uh, for those that are watching on the video stream... Very shadow run. Yeah, very much so. Um, so that is coming at some point. Panama Rose. I have no idea where the name comes from. From the lore in the background, I, ex I assume. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see how it lines up against things like... I mean, my first thought is obviously Super Fantasy Brawl, quickly followed by Judgment, um, because it's an arena fighting game. That's kind of where your brain goes. But I guess we'll find out. Yeah, it's, it's got a pretty cool... I mean, just the artwork. I mean, obviously haven't seen anything of it yet, but if the artwork's anything to go off of. Um, the, the artwork says that they've adapted with permission from Altered Carbon, Broken Angels, and Woken Furies, all of which are written by 
uh, Richard Morgan and published by something I'm not going to be able to try to... Galank? G-O-L-L-A-N-C-Z. Galanks. I don't know. It's part of Orion Publishing, anyway. Yeah. But I assume no. that they're all based in the same world, or they're by the same person, so therefore they're being smashed together. I don't know. This has only been announced yeah. recently, so time will tell. Yeah, yeah. Next, uh, we have uh, news from uh, Fantasy Flight Games. Uh, they're releasing a miniature for the whiniest character in the Star Wars universe. Okay, second whiniest behind 3PO. Third, because Anakin is there as well. Okay, fair. Well, when Anakin was Anakin, when he became, you know, Dark Father, uh, you know, he became less whiny. But... Yeah. Um, uh, Luke, Luke sorry, Sky... Luke Skywalker. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a limited edition mini that is coming out to local gaming stores. There is no news at this stage as to how limited that will be. Those that have been listening to us for a while will know instantly why I'm wording it that way. Um, especially with this game, Fantasy Flight games are going to want to be careful with their limited stuff. Uh, I haven't because really heard much this of the is... way of complaints before, so but COVID being COVID, yeah. it wouldn't surprise me if it's struggling. Yeah. Now, now th this is a really cool mini because it's the he's crashed on Hoth going after the uh uh walker yes. luke skywalker he's got his his orange flight suit on and stuff like that so he can be helmeted he can be unhelmeted he can have the visor down he can have the visor up um he can also and it looks like a blaster or, or yeah yes so uh lots of different options uh i i think um a very underrated luke uh, of the I mean, think, who really cares about the, his time on Hoth when he was flying around in a land speeder and, you know, was told by, you know, Ghost to go to Dagobah? I mean, that's, that's kind of like, you know, a small little part of whatever, JP. Uh, it's kind of a small part of the whole Luke and you know, his uh, character growth of, I'm a Jedi. No, I'm not. <laughs> Things are hard. As you can tell, George is a huge fan of Luke Skywalker. I, I like Star Wars. I just think as like a main uh, hero character in the universe, he was exceptionally whiny and, and cryy. Yeah, I, I get Be that. Be more like Han. Um, Shoot first. <laughs> for those that understand the rules and are looking at the video flight, then we have a teaser here of his abilities. So he has a jump ability, a charge ability. Uh, he has deflecting. Uh, he's immune to pierce damage. Uh Pierce cannot be used against you, which is nice. Um, but I don't understand the rules of the game enough to really comment on how powerful or not he will be. Yeah, we need a Captain Sox here to translate that into to English. English. Yeah. Now, George, I would recommend putting your... Bruce. I would recommend watching this video, but muting the audio. Green Stuff Audio have some really cool paints. Uh, we've seen a couple of months ago, well, no, quite some time ago now, a spider web one where you just spray it out of the airbrush and it creates spider webs like magic. This one does the same thing, but with frost and ice. It looks awesome. So if you mute the sound and skip through it a little bit, you can see that they're just brushing it on by hand. Yep. And as it dries, you can continue to add more. And basically, it's going to grow crystals around where you've placed it. Uh, it's obviously a, a bit of a reaction as it dries. And it ends up looking like that. If you watch the full video, you will actually see the transition. But I think I'm going to need some of this for my Frostgrave stuff. I mean, they, they're going to sell a bunch um, of this to Frostgrave players all just by themselves. Uh, I may have to get the, some of this for, uh, because I have... Space uh, it, it, 
Well, yeah, d just the, the small faction of uh, the small bit where they have the frost swords. Yeah. The video also shows the, this would be used on an airbrush as well. Um, the only thing I would say, if you're going to use this in an airbrush, given how this stuff appears to work, I would not be... If you're going to use this in your airbrush, I would be washing your airbrush immediately. I would be slightly paranoid about it because you don't want it growing inside of your airbrush. Yeah. Um, yeah. Anybody watching the video footage um, of this that happens to have captured the small snippets of video that I was watching, uh, all of that footage belongs to Green Stuff World. Yes, it is very important to say that. Green Stuff World just... Um, their product range is just insanely good. And with the exception of their resin water, and f to, to be frank, I seem to be the only one that's ever had a problem with their resin water. Um, I've not had a problem with anything else they've done. It's only that water stuff that I had issue with. This is this is really nifty stuff. Um, I'm just getting to the uh, where they're painting the windshield on the Italian hypercar. <laughs> yeah. Oh, they're not going to show it do that effect. Um, really cool stuff. I, I, I may have to break down and, and get some of that because uh, I've not seen anything like that before, Neither. ever. I've never seen anything even remotely similar to that. I kind of the picture itself kind of shows you what it's going to do, but even having seen the picture, I wasn't really ready to watch the crystals because for those that are just listening to the audio, when this dries, it grows crystals like in your high school science classes when you were trying to grow them out of chemicals. Um, I don't know how I'll, long I'll this stuff takes to react. Um. Between four and twenty-four hours, so this is going to be a very slow process. Uh, and the more you use, obviously, the larger it's going to be. If it's not enough, you can then put more on and watch it dry again. But you would be wanting—you said more on. Yep, uh, you'd be wanting to put this on <laughs> at the end of your thing. Um, yeah, this is. It's recommended. God, I'm just. In airbrushing, it's recommended not to apply too thin layers since crystals will not form. So it's recommended to put it on strong, essentially, is what they're saying. Uh, if you put it on little bits, then the crystals will be weaker and probably not be visible. I'm just thinking about all the, like, you know, my space wolves, because that's what the only thing I really have a, a use for this for. But just like all the hair and the facial features, like putting yeah. a little bit to this on. So it's just like, you know, it, you know, it's on the quarter edges of the beard right here. And, you know, I mean, I, you I know, have parts of the, you know, the feet. And... Snow effect on miniatures to try and simulate what frost would do. Um, this does it. This, this, if this if it works as the video shows. Yeah. I'm going to have to get some of this at some point. I need to get some of the spiderweb stuff too, but <sighs> yeah, very, very impressed. Green stuff would continue to come out with things way left of center that I just don't see coming. <sighs> Speaking of don't see. Oh, hey. Star collecting boxes are disappearing. Now, what? Okay. So in this week's pre-orders for Games Workshop, we have a new box called Combat Patrol. And Games Workshop have already confirmed that the Combat Patrol boxes are designed to be replacing start collecting boxes. The idea of these boxes is that they're essentially a starting army to get started. So in the case of the Space Puppies, you have 17 models. It's a Combat Patrol sized force. Um... All of the prices that I'm going to be quoting are going to be in Australian dollars. George, if you want to do the whole US thing and see if your version is up yet, I don't know if it is or not. In the space, oh, I'm sure if it is, it's on the website. Yeah. If you go top right-hand corner to the Australian flag, you can change yours over. The new box 
comes with a Primaris Lieutenant. It comes with an Invicta Tactical Warsuit, which is the big thing over here. You get 10 Primaris Intercessors, which appear to be the new versions. And 5 Primaris Reavers. And you also get 2 Space Wolf Primaris upgrade frames, which is important. Um, so, in Australian dollars, that's $230 for 17 minis. In, in US dollars, that's 140 Um The old version of the box, I don't have open, but the old version of the box was about 150 ish off the top of my head. Um, the old version of the box had three Thunderwolves, a Space Marine Commander, and a 10-man Space Wolf pack, which is a tactical squad. Um, value for money, I do think this is a smarter investment purely because the models that you're getting are going to be more appropriate to play with. Because the big problem with the old boxes is most of the stuff in them was nice for a collector, but most of them basically had crap when it came to actually playing the game. Um, yeah. I don't know about... The, in the previous edition, what were Thunderwolves like? Uh, Thunderwolf Calvary in the previous edition was kind of, I can't remember. Okay. Uh, I do... Oh, no, Sorry. Sorry, no, I do know because we're already, we're on a new edition. So, <laughs> in the edition where I really got into you know really building my space wolf uh, force, Thunderwolf Calvary was redonkulous. Okay, so they actually had a decent box then. Yeah, so uh, Wolfen Wolfen were stupid. Uh, Thunderwolf Cal. Now this was depending on how you get them too, but yeah. um, having way, a, a tough of- five three wound, it was it was ridiculous. You can also build your Reavers as Hounds of Morkai, which is obviously a, a Space Wolf thing. There's an alternate build. Um, I'm kind of irritated at this because I have a whole bunch of Reavers that I would like to have as this Hounds of Morkai then. Um, thanks! <laughs> um... I can only make assumptions with just... the in-game stuff with this, but given that it's the new stuff and not the old stuff, I think it's a pretty safe assessment to say that because it's coming with the new models, it's going to be better value long-term. Now, obviously, if you're not a fan of the Primara stuff, then you're not going to see as much value in these, uh, and that's not going to help. The only negative thing I would, only... say, I would say is that because... It's a more expensive box. Look, it's not a cheap hobby. Most of us that are in the hobby already understand that. For, but for people that are coming to the hobby that are new, they don't understand that. And $230 as opposed to $150, which is already a high asking price for a brand new person, um, may turn certain people off. I mean, as I said, I know that this is not a cheap hobby to begin with, but people that are new to the hobby that haven't been tempted in yet, it's going to be harder to get them across that line, potentially. It'll so, uh, my order's... My order's complete, and uh, some of the Frost stuff is on the way to me. Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah, like... <laughs> uh, there's also a Death Watch version of this coming as well. Uh, the Death Watch one is only 15 minis, so it is better value for the Space Puppies. But the Death Watch minis have been more expensive if for ages anyway. Um, exactly the same price point I, I, on my side. Oh. Yeah? Uh, same price point on my side. I will say it does have the Aggressors, which is a, a bigger, heavier, more expensive unit too. So. Yeah. Uh, you're getting a... The, 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 I... Yep. Ah, go ahead. I was going to say, you're getting a Primaris Lieutenant, Apothecary, Intercessors, and as George already said, Aggressors. And in this case, you get Death Watch upgrade frames instead of Space Wolf ones. Because nobody wants Space Wolf ones. 
Not when you're buying know. a Death Watch box. Specials anyway. are cool. Yeah, but you're it's not going fair. That is fair. Death Watch. I do like Death Watch. Yeah, no, that's minis. fair. They are gorgeous. Yeah, they are pretty cool. I, uh, I, I, I know a few guys that. Because Death Watch as an army just doesn't seem as fun to me. I don't know. That's just me. Uh, other good news. Uh, Gaz Kulthraka is available outside of that box. Yep, as is your guy. I forget. Wolfbane? No. Uh, Ragnar. Ragnar and Wolfbane. Ragnar. Yeah, they both are. Um, I kind of concentrated on Gaz Kulthraka because when it came to the news the original time around, almost nobody was excited by Ragnar for some reason. I thought it was a gorgeous mini, but everybody just seemed to um, moan about it. Not for that price, for a single hero. You're looking at Gazgul or Ragnar? Ragnar. I think it's the same price as Gazgul, R- isn't he? Is he 110 as well? No. No, Ragnar is 40 US dollars, 70 Australia dollars for a normal size mini. Gazgul, you know, he's at least a dreadnought size. Yeah. So he's coming at 110, so he's around the same price as. Uh, Gilliman is ish. I think Gilliman's 120. I'm not 100 percent sure on that. I'm still very, very tempted to get one of these and paint it up to make look like everything is made of Nerf guns. I've been tempted by that for a long time, but I don't know if I ever will now. I have enough. Practice. Yeah, Gilliman's like 105, so yeah, it's right up there in the same size and, yeah. and price range. So which for him is it is worth it. Um. I still don't think that for those that were splitting boxes and stuff back in the day for Tooth and Claw or whatever it was called, I think I might actually have that box set name wrong. I think Tooth and Claw was an older one. Um, but whatever it was, um, basically... The most recent one like, with Space Wolves and... Yeah. yeah. Orc players were expected to pay like 70 to 80% of the box price because people didn't want... And it was, Orc players are being ripped off, which is not fun. Uh, not by Games Workshop, by the third market, by the third party market. But yeah, um, I, I find it amusing that next. Games Workshop have released this and said, "Hey, it's October," and that's the only thing they've done for October. We've got no new boys, shocking, no new nothing for like the fourth year in a row. Like they're not even trying. But moving on from... What? But okay. but they already did something. They made a new gas curl. Yeah, whatever. Um, yeah, next, uh, th- this is going to be a little more up your wheelhouse because you understand what more what's going on with it. Yeah. Okay, so we got Bushido. We've got a new box set coming called The Brotherhood. So this is a new themed warband. So it's a new starter set. And, oh my God, these are so pretty. They're very much... I mean, th- these are Huns, let's just be honest. They're, they're Huns. Um, well, they're not all Huns, because Huns didn't have monks like that that I know of. But... So uh, Tibetan area, so... For those that are not familiar with Bushido, it's essentially a fantasy Japan-type world. Um, but this is... Th- this is the Huns from the Mulan animated movie in my eyes. I need oh, yeah. this box set. <laughs> the guy is carrying a giant tree that's on fire. Or a giant... It looks like it's Stick. supposed to break down, like the battering rams, but he's carrying it all by himself. He also appears to be like eight foot tall in comparison to everybody else on the table. I mean, the big guy is the size of... He's bigger than the guy that's on the horse. Yeah, he's he's bigger than the horse. Yeah. Um, we got some hints here of their cards and stuff. I won't look into them too closely. Uh, oh, here's the big guy, I think. I like the fact that with the artwork on these, they kind of... The artwork on the cards actually looks like the mini. Which not everybody does that. Oh yeah, hey. Yeah, I just see the. Oh yeah, yeah. His weapon is called Burning Log. Okay. That's subtle. Yep. 
Uh, yeah, I'm... I've been tossing up what next box set I was going to buy for this for a while. Especially given that I haven't really played with my first ones yet. But, at very minimum, I want these to paint. Like, 100%. Yes. I want to paint this. Um, that is going to be coming to my pile of shame at some point very soon. I need to finish my Skaven so that I'm allowed to paint other things again. Like uh, Undead Halfling Armies? Undead Halfling Armies? I was tempted to get this when I brought the um, Rumble Slam stuff, but I had to behave because there was something there was something else that was going on at the time. So, I'm, s yes. I'm sorry, it's... There's an Undead Halfling Army. 100%. This came from the same Kickstarter where my Halfling uh, Rumble Slam box came from. Uh, that I got some months ago. They've been kind of teasing the Halfling army out over the last few months now, and they've held off with the undead side of the Kickstarter for obvious reasons, because now is a really good time to actually release them. So, how awesome are undead armies? Well, it, it includes the father from the Munsters. Uh, at least that's who he looks like. Totally. Um... There is nothing about this that is bad. Everything about... Like, it's undead and they're halflings. What is going to be... And they're adorable. Those? They are cute as buttons. So you got undead halfling zombies. You've got undead zombie ghouls. You've got undead halfling mummies. You've got undead halfling on horseback. If you don't see this and immediately want this, then you're dead inside. Unless, of course, you just don't... I don't want things. it, but... I don't want it, but that's because... Halflings are cool, but I'm not... I'm not, like... I don't know. Yeah. I don't need it. Um, I certainly would love to paint some of this. Like... This entire army, by the way, which is... Hang on. Is there somewhere on this that says how many minis it is? So you get three heroes, four infantry regiments. So there's two regiments of 20 halfling zombies, 20 halfling ghouls, and 20 halfling mummies. A regiment of 10 Wait. halfling wraith knights on ghost ponies. Five bases of halfling spirits. There's even 10 halfling zombie bursters for free, so they're the ones that are coming up out of the ground. And all of those 115 miniatures is a hundred pound. That is a lot. Yeah, it's a pre-order for November 27th. That, that's, that's less than a dollar a mini. Yeah. Lewis contends to, you, you, to do good stuff. Not that he's the only one. Sh show me another game. Yeah, what, show me another game where you can spend a dollar per mini and have an army. True. True. Uh, what would you use these for? My first thought would be Kings of War. Um, but otherwise, just find a rule set that you like that's fantasy-based. Um, I could see, like, the, the, the little spiky ghoul guy, I could see him totally being used on a Blood Bowl army for halflings. True. It's a lot of minis for one Blood Bowl thing, though. So, but maybe with being so so busy with coming up with halfling undead armies and everything, um, Lewis uh, says they're uh, halting orders for MDF products right now. Yes, that's yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, and um, I didn't pull this up on my video feed mainly because there's just no point. Um, they've ordered a whole heap of new <laughs> laser cutters uh, because their old ones were getting kind of long in the tooth and the COVID situation actually led to a lot more MDF orders than they were kind of expecting and it's kind of ran Well, what are some people going to do when they can't leave their home and do other things? Yeah, but they've also been working on a skeleton crew. So they're waiting on their new stuff to yeah. arrive. They are building their stock back up and it's, it's only a temporary thing, but for the moment TT Combat have taken all of their MDF stuff off the storefront entirely. Uh, which oh, is fine. I did. 
I didn't realize that. Holy cow. Um, well, the whole point is that they're not selling them at the moment, so they've taken them off the storefront. Yeah, that's fair. Okay. So if you go to the top box, 10 tab... Oh, no, you can browse them. Sorry, I stand corrected. I'm wrong. You can still browse them, you just can't buy them. Because if you try to add that to your cart, you'll get an error. But, yeah. They're slowly catching up, and they've got 12 new laser cutters on the way. 12. That's a couple. Uh, no, a couple would be two. This is 12. Okay. A, a couple half dozen there. Yeah. Um, next, uh, reading a little bit ahead here, uh, I was sitting here re reading this article. I'm like, I know this name. Why do I know this name? This name is driving me nuts. Why? Yeah. Uh, so, huge, new, huge news here in, uh, uh, War Chief Gaming. War Chief Gaming. Most people's first reaction are going to be, why are you talking about a company that doesn't exist yet? Uh, this is, a, essentially what started out as a gaming club between friends. But those friends are Chris Metzen, Mike Gilmartin, and Ryan Collins I'm not as familiar with. Uh, but the other two are... Let me just read off, for those that are unsure, a couple of yeah, small, Chris, small Chris, gaming titles that you might recognise. Yeah, Chris Metzen, he... Diablo is the big one Chris Metzen's from. Um, well, he's from all of them. Starcraft and Overwatch. Well, and and you can argue this another title that you forgot there because it well it's based off the same IP. It is a completely different game and gameplay. Uh, actual World of Warcraft. Yes, yes, but they they were talking about franchises, not um, actual games. The, well, they, they well they don't they don't like to classify Warcraft and World of Warcraft because it's two different two different things. But well, okay. needless to say, uh, th this guy is responsible for you know the gaming habits of several million people across the world. Um, he's also, like, him and Mike Gilmartin are both from that background, and they're from the point of Blizzard's history before Activision completely ruined them. Um, no, I'm not here to talk about Activision and Activision Blizzard and what they've become, but Diablo has, without question, one of the richest laws in PC and gaming history. Uh, World of... Warcraft is right there with it when it comes to gaming law. Uh, Starcraft 2. Uh, like, all of these games have really big, rich histories that hold up. Um, Diablo is about to get its fourth game at this point. Um, regardless of what you think about the modern versions of the game, you can't question the background for them. Um, these guys are responsible for some really big things. And they're moving into tabletop gaming because they have played stuff as a club for a long time and they they want to get back into developing stuff on their own again. This is a this Well, and I like and I could argue to that for project. Yeah. I could argue the fact of, you know, I'd played a lot of video games and I stopped why? Because well, I just sat there by myself. You know, I talked to people, yeah. you know, you know when you, when you go and play a game that we play, you sit down with your friends or you sit down in a gaming store and Oh, this game looks cool. Yeah, sit down, come on, you know, jump in. You know, you make new friends. You know, you interact with, with with you know new people sharing games and stuff that you, you like and enjoy. And I can see at this point, you know, where they're like, you know, God, we miss that. You know, maybe, maybe that's why there's a you know they're doing this is, you know, doing something else that's new and that that they still enjoy. Yeah, I mean th these these guys are responsible for some really big IPs. Um... <laughs> Mike Gill Martin also used to work for Idis, Maxis, and Atari, so he's been in gaming even longer. Um, Chris is very much known as the visionary behind the worlds of the games that I spoke of before. Uh, that's like his bread and butter is developing those sort of lore. Um, I I'm excited to see what comes out of this. Um, I mean, there's yeah. no way of really knowing at the moment, but these guys. I mean, you're looking through their website, which is just warchiefgaming.com. You can actually see what they've been playing as a club. They've got, like, narrative events that they've been running. 
Um, they're talking about the games. Like, the, these guys are... These guys are passionate about this industry, which is important. Yeah. Because you're never going to get anywhere if you don't have passion for it. Um, I'm really excited to see what happens here. I'm not a WoW person, just for the record. Uh, I understand why people like it. I never enjoyed the gameplay. In saying that, I've also not played anything after the base game. Um, Diablo is probably my favourite gaming franchise. Maybe. Um, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see where this goes. Um, and what they do. Um, I'm kind of hoping that they develop something new. But at the same time, I wouldn't be surprised if they pick up an IP and go down the Atomic route. Atomic Mass Games basically just picked up a really rich IP and developed a really good game around it. These guys clearly have a yeah. passion to design something really good rules-wise. But whether they design their own world, which I suspect is what they'll do, especially with Chris Metzen there, because that's, again, what he loves doing. Right. Uh, but at the same time, I could see a um, StarCraft game. Put that into a, a tabletop thing. I could totally see that. That'd be very... I could see... Like a, a I Risk Axe and all. StarCraft game too. Yeah. Um, it's probably a... Like if you were going to develop a Warcraft game, you probably wanted it to come out around when the movie was released. But... I think well, you would still they're... get a lot of interested play, playful. I mean, the fact that it's developed card games and stuff that have all become successful, like, it's a pretty... Nine physical card games. Yeah. Coming up next is a new board game from a franchise that I've been a fan of for a very long time. Um, oh, is this the one that I just randomly found and was like, Bruce, look at this. Uh, yes, but I'd already been looking at it, which is what I hadn't told you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> So, Sentinels of the Multiverse is a card game developed by Greater Than Games. It's one of the first massive Kickstarter success stories. This particular board game is called Freedom 5, and it's based on that franchise. Um, it's labelled as a Sentinel Comics board game, which is everything in the universe is referred to as Sentinel Comics. There's never actually been any comics, just for the record. Uh, all the comics are fictional. Um, they write their rule books in a way where it kind of feels like a comic. Um, this is a cooperative comic book adventure board game, uh, which is created by Richard Launius, who I'm not familiar with, and the Sadler Brothers, who I'm also not familiar with. Um, this looks really good. Pre-painted minis, so you'll either love or hate that. I have no judgment one way or the other. Uh, the examples of the pre-painted they have here look brilliant. Um, my advice to people would always be wait to see what they're like when they arrive. Bring down your expectations. Yeah. Pre-painted minis need to be done at a cost. Um, and it's not that hard to repaint them if that's what you decide to do. Um... I'm someone who own almost everything from the original card game, uh, which was also a cooperative game, and a game that I would recommend to anybody, regardless of whether you like superhero stuff or not. It is the most fun card game I've ever played, um, which probably says a lot. But this this looks really good. I have not backed this yet, but I probably will. I've been following it since day one. I just haven't backed it yet because I'm not a rich person and I only have so much money. Uh, what? Base game is $99, uh, which includes the core game. You get all of the heroes and masterminds upgraded to miniatures. <gasps> Ooh, excuse me. Um... And you get an exclusive deluxe box and smart storage system. Um, there's also a larger one that comes with everything. And that's the one that has the... Oh, hang on. So the pre-painted miniatures are not standard. Interesting. That's changed. Um, there's a 
pre-painted miniatures, which is at the $199 level. You're also getting a whole heap of foil cards and stuff in that one as well. So that's interesting. Uh, or if you if you really do want to spend a lot of money, you can spend $500 and then you get to be in the game. Um, what? Your, li your likeness will get a comic book rendition and will be featured on a new bystander card. Um, and there's a lot of unlocks if you really want to go down the rabbit hole on this. It's already funded. Uh, they've already got a whole heap of unlocks. Uh, they're currently sitting at... What are they sitting at? Quite a lot. I'm not surprised. This is a very popular franchise. Uh, 380,000 out of 50,000 that they were looking for. Yeah. Um, check it out. We'll, we'll leave the links. This one, at time of recording, still have 12 days to go. So, there'll still be about five days left on this when it goes live to public. Um, yeah, I, I probably will end up backing this. It's just a matter of the big thing for me is that it's $99 for the base game, right? But then I also have to pay for shipping. Uh, oh, I don't have to pay for shipping till later. Oh, maybe that helps a little bit, but it's still $141 for me. Jeez. That's all right. We'll see. <clears throat> Last in the news is Victory at Sea. So this was actually pointed out by um, Michelle for us. Um, Warlords Victory at Sea are releasing a whole heap of carriers, submarines, U-boats, and there's a full hardcover rulebook version as well. I can't actually seem to find the hardcover rulebook, so I'm going to take his word on that. Yeah, no, this is the game that uh, Socks is interested in, right? Uh, was he this one or was he Black Flags? I think he was Black Flags, wasn't he? I, I, I can't remember. If only, if only he was here to ask. I, don't, I think he was a Black. I think he was Black Seas. Wasn't he like it was like the old I, time ships? I don't. Remember. I don't know. I can't remember. But for example. I mean, in the video preview here, you're seeing all of the existing stuff as well. But you've got the USS Idaho there. Um, you've got the Bismarck. You've got the Yamato. I'm going to probably be butchering half of these. Uh, the Yamato. Flight. You've got Corsair flights, which will obviously be coming off the um, ships. USS Missouri. So there's a lot of stuff that's coming out at the moment. I don't see the U-boats, though. Scroll down a little more, I think. Hmm. No? I don't see those, yeah. Apparently there are U-boats, but I do not see them, Michelle. That's alright, but it's interesting to see what they're coming out with. This is a game that was only released semi-recently. We did discuss this a couple of episodes ago. <sighs> Unless it was last episode. It was very recently we discussed this. Um, yeah. But they're already getting expansions. They're obviously getting... I mean, it's it's Warlord. They do have a very strong um, player base that tends to pick up a lot of their stuff. So it doesn't really surprise me that they've had success. But it's good to see. Um, otherwise... Shall we discuss some indie gaming? Yeah, let's uh let's let's talk some indie stuff. So this week I have got Reptilian Overlords. These guys are doing 3D printable models. Uh they have a subscription <sighs> service available where you get so many credits for your monthly subscription. Um each it starts at like <sighs> essentially 10 bucks. The thing that caught my attention on this, though, is these totally not Katachan models, including a Sergeant... No, Kirk. they're absolutely not. Or a Colonel Apollo. Yep. Um, the Space Nam Infantry. I just love the name. Um, Space Nam. 
Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I probably... I want that in- infantry already. Uh, there's a Sergeant Car... Sergeant Major Meat Grinder, which is totally not... Um, uh, it's definitely not Sergeant Slaughter. Definitely not. Even though it looks just like Sergeant Slaughter from wrestling and GI. No, it's not. It's not because he has a power fist. So it's it's definitely not. Yeah. Um. And yeah, the, the fact that Colonel Apollo, Iron Man Proximal, looks just like a mini release by Games Workshop but different recently, uh, is a complete coincidence. They also have a really cute mini cat, which is like a cat person. In, yeah, that colonel uh, doesn't have a have a shirt or anything on, so it's obviously not him. Yep, yep. <laughs> the, the the fact that it just happens to resemble, um, the likeness of the actor that played Apollo Creed is completely coincidental. It's probably worth oh, noting yeah, the com- companies com- probably want to be careful when it comes to l- stealing likenesses from uh, oh. celebrities. There's a very famous example of Marvel doing that. And the only reason they got away with it is because they basically gave the guy one of the biggest contracts that the world has ever seen. Um, which was the gentleman that played Nicholas Cage, uh, not Nicholas Cage, um, Nick Fury in the Marvel Universe. They had been using... Samuel L. His- Jackson. Yep. Yeah. They'd been using his likeness in the comics for about a decade without permission. He is actually a comic book fan, which is why they decided to do it, but they'd never asked permission. And he was very upset <laughs> until he got money. They were like, oh, yep, no, we screwed up, and they gave him money for it, which is completely fair enough. Right. Yeah. So, for example, um, they, they say that you get like three credits for your $10 credits. a month. So your three credits could get so this tank, for example. Get this tank, for example. Uh, it could also get the spaceman, the, the, so the space nam infantry, for example. So definitely got my attention for some fairly obvious reasons. Uh, I'm not a subscriber on this, but they do have models that I want. Uh, yeah, this this looks pretty cool. Ooh, they they definitely don't have a uh uh oh what assassin is that with the big gun? Uh, the Vindicari assassin. They definitely don't have that either. Um, obviously these have been changed significantly from you know the intellectual properties they resemble. Um, ooh, um, I don't think I'm a big. If fan you go of click on the Vindicare, I'm not a fan of. That's a little bit too much for me. Um. Yeah, if you if you click on the miniatures, go all the way down the Zorbo and Duke STL. That's actually what caught my attention. Yeah, Zorbo and Duke are definitely not Rambo and Turok. Sure, Turok. <laughs> it's definitely not Arnold Schwarzenegger from Predator. Oh right, 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 exactly right, right. Yeah, because yeah, um, yeah. What's the character's name from Predator? Isn't it actually Duke? Duke? Um, I will tell you in a second. I I can't remember. Through the power of editing, we'll cut this a little bit out, hopefully. So he plays Dutch. Dutch. Okay. Dutch. That's what it was. Yeah. Um, I've had these two particular minis on my watch for. Quite a while, because when I first looked at this, I didn't have my 3D printer yet. So it gives you an idea of just how long I've had Reptilian Overlords bookmarked. Um, so also, too, you should go look at their free downloads, because there's some some there's things some in there really that nice heads are not... In there. Yeah. No, no, there's some... <laughs> the, 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 the chibi uh, heretic. Oh my god. Oh, that is awesome. Bruce, you, there's also a space. You mask. have to print that. Oh. <laughs> oh, you, this, you have to print those, dude. This is brilliant. <laughs> they also have enemy heads, which are definitely not Cobra infantry. Definitely not. I'm sorry, but they're totally... And they definitely different. don't have a Judge a judge Dreadhead down there either. No, no, no. He's called Judge Helmet. It's totally different. 
Yeah, he's just a helmet. There's no dread about him. Yeah. So, you're a fan of G.I. Joe, and you want to build up an enemy infantry, and you'd love to theme it around Cobra? Uh, All you need to do is the heads, because pretty much everything else is already there for you. Yeah. Yeah. The heretic leader head's really nice too, which is essentially just a realistic version of the Chibi. Which are those are so cute. Yeah. The Chibi Space Snaps is <laughs> just really cool. So yeah. Alrighty. Some really uh, interesting stuff going on this week. Shall we move on on to um hobby time? Three blue prime things. <laughs> so, Hobby time. Um, what have you been up to? Uh, I got another. Sh- you can, if you look over my behind my head here, Bruce. Yeah. I got another shelf in. Yes. And then I was able to attach this shelf to that shelf, so this shelf floats. So I didn't have to add any more of this stuff here. Okay. So, but I still have a, a, a way to hang my iPad, but now I can access my paper towels easier. Yep. And, you know, there's my paint shaker, my ultrasonic cleaner, and then the airbrush compressor is right over there. So here's all the stuff that I use for the airbrush, essentially, and then here's more paint. The Vallejo uh, metallic set that you uh, talked about that you said it's best airbrush metallics. And I'm like, all right, cool, you know, I'll just get it. And then my scale 75 flush set is right there as well. And then in between them is going to go the wood and leather, wood and leather, which has been ordered in on its way. With that particular metal set, by the way, you can use it brush very easily. It is a little bit thin, but that just helps with your thin coats. So, uh, right. It's so, only well, airbrush. So, so having the option airbrush, it is great. Oh yeah. Big time. Um, having, having not even used it yet or anything, but having the, uh, the more and more, with the exception of dry brushing, I'm wanting to work more and more on like, you know, refining my style and, you know, doing the thin coats and doing the fine details and stuff like that. So, yeah. you know, using my wet out there and doing a drop of a paint at the time, you know, try to make the paint stock, you know, last longer, spend less money on it, stuff like that. Um... So, uh, it made the space better to work at, uh, if anything. Um, I did get it recorded. Uh, I'll probably throw it up there. It's it's really hard to see me doing anything, really, because, as you can see, where my top-down camera is, and then the workspace, it's, it's designed for working on a miniature, like, you know, an area this big, not, you know, working on a shelf, and then another shelf, and then more shelf. Oh, I'm off-screen already. <laughs> yeah. Um... Yeah, good to hear. My hobby has been fairly but, limited, honestly. I mean, there's been a lot of it that's gone into videos, which are already live at this point. Um, we had the Super Fantasy Brawl unboxing go up. We had an unboxing of the miniatures from Eureka Miniatures. Uh, quite a few episodes now, we had a look at their Pond Wars stuff and the Australian Aboriginal stuff. So I unboxed all of that. Um, I have also had He-Man and Battle Cat arrive, uh, which was also unboxed. Um, He-Man and Battle Cat is from Archon, which is the people that have the European license. Um, 32 mil looks very much like 28 mil, although they're very, they are very close. But I don't think it's 32. I think it's 22. yeah. You're 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 talking like about a quarter inch difference, yeah. which that's not huge no but there's no way it's 32 mil it's it's, it's just not um but gorgeous looking mini don't get me wrong um what else have i been up to um i have not had a chance to touch you... the skaven because i've been working my butt off yeah i was gonna say there was a, that week you took off you were you were a, a madman of doing stuff yeah i um that was a little while ago now, but yeah, I um, I threw myself into. Well, I just happened to have a lot of stuff all arrive, so and I've been I've been trying to keep the yeah. video content coming. So, 
Uh, I've, I've done a lot of yeah. work probably more on behind the scenes in looking into how to improve the setup. So for those watching the video, this is something I've put a lot of work into here, trying to make this actually look good uh, and not just be a screen capture of our Discord server, uh, which is how we had done it in the past, um, which was fine, but I wanted it to look more professional and give you a view of what we're actually looking at. Um, now that we're not talking about the news, and I'm only mentioning this because George can't actually see what I'm looking at, um, there is a showcase of minis that I've worked on previously. Some of which I'm very, very proud of, some of which I'm not super proud of. It's kind of just a bit of a mixed bag. The idea is that it's supposed to help you... I don't know, it's just supposed to show, to me at least, where I've come. Um, there's no particular order that they're done. I've just tried to keep the same game separate if that makes sense just so that it's variety there's a bit of kings of war right there's a bit of dnd &D, there's a little bit of there's a little bit of everything in there um i'm already tempted to edit this video and try to get some of my marvel stuff in there but i will leave that for there but otherwise that's kind of been me um i'm kind of hoping to get some painting done tuesday um, Tuesday is a public holiday here for the Melbourne Cup, which is not happening, but we still get a public holiday. Um, the Melbourne Cup. No, it's is good. A I mean, people are play, planned on it, so. Yeah, no, well, they also don't get to take away public holidays; they're not allowed. Um, so just because the race is not happening doesn't mean that Melbourne doesn't get their holiday. Um, good. So how um, Melbourne show is a public holiday, but most people don't go to the Melbourne Cup. Melbourne show. Or is it a public holiday? I might be wrong on that, actually. Um, <laughs> I don't know. <clears throat> but yeah, that's kind of been me. Like I said, I haven't had the chance to do a lot hobby-wise. Um, it's just, yeah, it, it is what it is lately. It's kind of been nuts over here. I was on, I was on lights, and that tends to take away your energy when you're working your butt off in a hospital until 11 o'clock at night. And then working 15 minutes overtime that you will never get paid for. Um, it's got to suck your will to live. No, nah, not so much. It, it's, it is what it is. It made up for a day where I got out like 10 minutes early. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't make up for it, but it, 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 it balances I, out at the end. If it makes you feel like better, I had a five-hour day working on the uh, uh, the code yellow call system for a critical area of the hospital a couple of weeks ago where where I work. Code yellows tend to be <laughs> assuming that they mean the same thing there as they do here, which is there's a uh, aggressive. System. Oh no, well, aggressive people. Then. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> that would be code grey for us, or to, or code black if they have a weapon. Though I've never seen a code black called personally. Um, oh, shall right. we have? I want to talk about what a code of black is. <laughs> shall we game have... talk. Game talk. Yes. Talk nerdy to me. So, Game Talk this week comes from Thunderboy, who is obviously not here, but he's asking for our opinion on something. Thunderboy did a meeting with Poldercon, which is a Dutch demo convention. We discussed this building up to it next year. Sorry, uh, last year. Um, he's also filmed a demo of Victory at Sea, uh, because, like all cons, it's COVID, and with a test today, they hope to film more to get a series in. Um, but it looks like what they're trying to do is build, um, a thing of demos for an online con. I could be wrong on that because he hasn't been super detailed, but he's looking for suggestions of games. Think nice games, not 40k AOS. There's already a bunch dedicated to those. So he, he wants to get games mm. that are not getting a lot of attention because 40k and Age of Sigma don't need attention. They already have all of it. More than yeah, they, yeah. Would argue that they deserve. Uh, well, my suggestion is you know you know stick with what you know. Obviously, um, yeah. you know your drop fleet, drop zone stuff. You know, work on that. Obviously, because it, it, it's what he knows. It's 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 how we met him is through the the drop universe. Yeah, yeah, a hundred percent. Likewise, so, I would probably skip the mantic stuff. Uh, it doesn't get as much attention as 40k and Age of Sigma, but 
Kings of War has a huge... Actually, no. No, I take that back. Kings, Kings of War's big, but if you have access to Kings of War stuff or some old fantasy armies that you can easily throw into, showing the alternate's not a bad idea, really. Yeah. Uh, wh whether it needs the attention is borderline. Um, but otherwise... <laughs> Have a look at Alan's game. Um, uh, Alan's game. Oh yeah, yeah. Is definitely yeah, one yeah, that you could do that's... some attention with, especially given that it's on the border of, hey, this is coming, and there's a like, th there's never a better time to talk about a game than when it's coming. Yeah. Um, Infinity you can probably pass on because, again, huge player base doesn't need the attention. <laughs> Same with Malifaux. Huge Say, player base doesn't need the attention. Same with Warmer Hordes. Warmer Hordes really doesn't need the attention. Um, yeah. I don't know. I I would say you stick with what you know, you know, the, yeah. the drop zone, the drop fleet, and, and the stuff you love. You know, I mean, like you said, you know, not 40k or AOS, but I mean, if that's something that you loved and were passionate about, you know, who cares if someone's already doing a lot of, you know, talk about why you like it, you know, the, the stuff you like the and why you enjoy it. Yeah. You know, put 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 your your perspective on it because, you know, at the end of the day, you know, that's can that's what can, you know, change someone's mind and opinion about something is, you know, what your you passion. tell or share that share with them. Yeah, exactly. If I'm gonna do a demo of warmer hordes, I'm never gonna get anybody interested in warmer hordes because I don't enjoy it. Uh, I've never played it. Um, I have no interest. I mean, in I, I've it, but I've got an army somewhere in, in my stuff that is a quarter painted, and I I don't know what else I'm going to do with it at this point. I don't know if I'm going to continue it any further. Yeah. It's and that's it's nothing there. against Warmer Hordes. It's just I don't enjoy it. Therefore, yeah. I'm never going to advertise it well. Um, I assume that. Thunderboy is asking this not just for himself, but for the other people that's getting involved in Poldercon. So my advice yeah. would be very similar. Stick to what you're passionate about for player bases that you feel need the attention and deserve the attention. So for me personally, ignoring the games that I know very well, uh, Drop Fleet and Drop Zone obviously get there, um, but Bushido is another one. It does have a player base, but it's small, and it deserves to be bigger. Um, it, Frostgrave is a really easy one, because you don't even need to get specific minis for that. Um, just stick to the games that you know, the ones that you want to grow. I mean, we want the popular stuff to grow as well, but if you've got popular games, use them more to get the attention and then try to split the focus back to the other games that you're trying to grow and get bigger. Um, we try to do that with this to some extent. I mean, obviously we talk 40k and stuff a lot, but it's um, we talk about those to help broaden the picture as opposed to what we used to do, which was only talk about drop universe. Uh, we love the drop universe, but we wanted to expand into other stuff, so... I don't know, just right, like, like that. Well, and I, and I have to blame you for this, Bruce. This this is your fault, pointing at you. Uh, I've I found myself, you know, moving more towards, you know, the the cooperative, you know, board game type thing because you know it's it's simpler and it's easier to get the the non hardcore person to sit down and play a game with it or interested in playing a game with it instead of like you know, wait, I have to get what and I have to do what, you know. So what you're saying is that you've found it easier to have more fun and it's easier to get more people to play with you, and that's my fault. You're welcome. I know exactly. So, um, I get what you're saying. Pr prime example. Also, you can't really uh, go into the store and do it at the moment, anyway. So, well, we can, where I'm at, I can. Yeah. Where I'm at, I can. So, I can't. um. I know that's sad, but you know, just just so a prime example, uh, you you we talked about you know this was you know a very long time ago. You know you were like, hey, there's a game by Mythic. It's called Super Fantasy Brawl. I was like, yeah. what, what? It, 
and it showed up uh, last weekend. My my son came up, and I was just like, "Hey, check this out!" Boom, sat down. He's like, "You want to learn?" And I was like, "You want to learn how to play?" He's like, "Yeah, yeah." And within thirty minutes, he and I were, I think, seventy five percent accuracy on some of the rules. Um, and it was you know really cool just because you know it was very simple for even him to pick up. Like there was a couple times where he's like, "No, Dad, you have to do this first. And I'm like, "Oh yeah, that's right," you know, because yeah. we're learning so. It's good when you a know, game can be that straightforward. Um, right. Yeah. Well, and, and I find like, you know, a board game where it's like, it's 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 in here, just this little box. That's a lot easier to do with people than, uh, what does your Tau army do, got against my Space Wolves? You know, because I'm going to do this. And, you know, there's all this back and forth. The the fact that this game, that game has been going as long as it have with as many factions as it have. And they, yeah. they had the problem trying to keep it balanced versus, you know, you pull out, you know, Cthulhu Death May Die, and you're like, hey, these are the rules. Let's go. Yeah. You know? Um, yeah. So, yeah, to summarize, repeating exactly what we just said a second ago, um, stick with the games that you're passionate about. And, yeah, if the whole point of Poldercon is to do demos of games and introduce people to things, then introduce them to the games that need the attention. If there's popular games that people want to do, Use that to get more attention on the convention, and then use the convention to get the attention on the games that you need to get the attention on. Um, upcoming events-wise, uh, really only still the one current one that I'm aware of, personally. Uh, the Drop Zone and Drop Fleet community groups are both running competitions to design a unit or terrain piece. Uh, the deadline to enter the competition is the 20th of November. So you can design a unit to be played in the game, design rules around a terrain piece in the game. It's completely up to you. Um, otherwise, anything else you want to do, uh, talk about before we close off? Um, just briefly, because I just I just saw this update. I, I missed it yesterday. Um, I sent you a link in our group chat. Let's have a look at the group chat for for Facebook. Because I might have missed that one. I, I just sent it like a few minutes ago. Well, it helps if I look at the group chat then. <laughs> oh the light pledge is open for massive darkness well the, the, that's that's been open for, for a bit i think uh they're actually uh showing uh actual minis now that's if good. you scroll down so th it, 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 they just they look magnificent in my opinion for for a board game miniature that you pull out of the box and you know what so, what what really strikes me is look at the scale of how big they start getting. Let's have a look at this. I've brought it across to the thing. So we've got a couple of hero looking guys here. Yeah, the the the, the guy on the left is a the big guy to, to show the mint the size of everything else. Oh my lord, that guy's huge. <laughs> right? He's like the size of four of... No, three of the other guy. So what we're currently looking at is the resins. So this will not be the final product. This is what the product will be cast from. Um, because yep. this is a Seamon game. They do not do resin miniatures. They use their resin miniatures to get... The casts of the plastics. But do you see how big that last one is? Yeah, yeah that's huge. That is massively huge. And if you figure so, if you figure that's your regular, you know, your standard, you know, what inch and a quarter tall mini there for the 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 hero you play as, that guy's still massively huge. Yeah. Regardless. So, so we did discuss massive darkness. A little while ago, I don't remember exactly when I was, uh, but just to scroll down very, very quickly, this is the one that came with all of the really cool-looking dungeon terrain. 
the yeah, board. so there was um, the option of the really expensive one that came with the quest organizer and stuff. So yes, yeah. Um, now, now, now to uh, to to just go a little further in this. So this massive darkness two for for a couple dollars on top of all the other stuff is a really good deal because for that couple extra dollars you get the tiles and all the quests, you know, mission stuff from Massive Darkness for Massive Darkness 2. So it, if you don't have Massive Darkness, like I don't, because you didn't know this game existed until Massive Darkness 2 Kickstarter came out, and you're like, ooh, you can get all of that and 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 whatnot and enjoy that. So uh Pledge Manager has not opened up, but the this is the first like you know group of minis they've started showing off and I'm just I'm really excited with how they look. It does say that you can late pledge though. Where does that take you? To the website probably. Um uh, let's let's maybe they're taking money and that will give you access to the pledge manager when it opens then don't know yep that's exactly what it looks like because the first thing it says is if you've already pledged on the kickstarter even for a dollar do not late pledge here so yeah because then you'll end up having two that they'll have to combine which will make things difficult on their side otherwise now yeah, so to everyone that continues to follow us we are very grateful uh for those that support us financially we are very grateful uh, for $2 a month, you can support us continuing to grow, uh, not just from a skill perspective, but from a technology perspective, hopefully. Uh, not that we're spending big money, but I, I bought an arm for my camera to try and get a top-down view of the board that we're going to play on. Um, uh, Patreon.com oh, slash getting table. I bought some wire wraps so that my cables are like not all over the place for when I'm moving cameras around. <laughs> um we're only mentioning these things because this is not a case of we make well, like we don't make anything from this it's all invested straight back into it um the best place to follow us we're having fun doing this. Wise is facebook.com slash getting tabled um that is where everything gets we do have a twitter which is at getting tabled we do share stuff there but it's not as active as the facebook is um same with the instagram at getting tabled which I haven't even used at all yet. So, I, I've used it three times. <laughs> it's a start. I don't even have Instagram on my phone. So, but otherwise, if you enjoy our content, share it with your gaming friends. Um, if you're in a position where you can assist us in other ways, we would very much appreciate it. If you go to YouTube <laughs> and search "getting tabled," as George kind of hinted at, there has been quite a lot of content that's gone there recently. Uh, every video that I post, well, 95% of the videos that we post go to Patreon first. There is only a very, very small number of the ones that don't, and they are usually ones that are concentrating on stuff that's already live or where we have another arrangement, but they're very, very, very unusual. Or if there's been a technical problem that's made it delayed, then it's got out later than it was supposed to. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. For listening to Getting Table. Music used in this podcast was created by Eric Mataris at soundimage.org.